Raising capital to start a business. Let's cash in. Finance for the everyday millennial. Hard charging solutions. We provide an accelerant in the journey towards financial independence. Welcome back to Cash In With Cash In, the financial forum for young professionals. You know, if there is one financial characteristic that sets millennial and Gen Z professionals apart from other generations, it's our entrepreneurial spirit. Surveys have found that nearly one third of millennials own a business or have a side hustle. And while our Gen Z colleagues are just starting out in the working world, they seem to be taking a page from our book. About 62% or nearly two thirds of this generation either have a business or intend to start one. It takes a huge leap of faith to start a business. It also takes time and money. You need to be committed to your business idea for years to come, not just for this month. If you're just starting to become financially independent, you may wonder if your dream is even possible. I'm here to tell you that while there are no guarantees, it is possible. You just have to do a little research, make a plan, and work that plan. If I haven't scared you off, let's get on to the good stuff and look at where to find the money to start your new business. There are two basic ways to fund a business. You can fund it yourself, or you can do it with OPM or other people's money. A link to that video can be found up here. Each option has its pros and cons. Funding a business by yourself allows you to retain total ownership. That can be a good thing if you want to be in charge of your economic destiny, but it does bring risks. Starting and running a business costs money, and most businesses don't make money right away. If you sink all your savings into your business, how will you cover your monthly living expenses or pay for unexpected expenses? To answer these questions, you'll need to write a realistic budget. A budget will help you see what's financially possible right now. If your goal is to save up money to start a business, then your budget can be the blueprint that gets you there. To fund a new business, some entrepreneurs choose to borrow money from their retirement savings. But before you tap into your 401k, you'll need to do some research. Check with your program administrator to see if the program rules allow for this. If you get the okay to borrow, you need to know that IRS limits the amount that you can borrow from your 401k to 50% of your vested account balance or $50,000, whichever is less. The rules for borrowing from an IRA are a bit different. If you have a Roth IRA, you can withdraw contributions, but not earnings, that meet the five year rule at any age. For a traditional IRA, you may have to pay back any funds you borrow within 60 days or pay a 10% penalty plus tax. If you own a self-directed 401k or IRA, you can borrow from those accounts to invest in your new business. We talked about self-directed IRAs in another episode linked above, so be sure to check that one out as well. Other self-funding options include taking out a personal loan, doing a cash out refi of your home, using a home equity line of credit, or using credit cards to cover the initial costs. Please educate yourself on the risks of each option because a default on any of these loan types will negatively impact your personal credit worthiness or possibly cause you to lose your home. If self-funding isn't the right step, you want to cast a wider net. If your family and friends have been behind your idea, you may be able to tap into what's commonly called the bank of mom and dad. We all know that borrowing money from loved ones can put a strain on our relationships. So it's a good idea to draw up an informal lending agreement stating how you will use the money, how you will pay it back, what interest rate, if any, exists, along with a schedule for repayment. You could also leverage the power of the internet and solicit support through a crowdfunding campaign. This option has been used to fund movies, develop popular VR headsets, and bring tech innovations to the market. Did you know that Tile, that little Bluetooth thingy that helps you find lost items like keys or cell phones, started with a Kickstarter campaign? If you go this route, 
Make it clear up front what type of crowdfunding you are running. Donation crowdfunding basically means you're asking for cash and offering nothing in return. A reward program gives funders a little something in return, usually a first generation version of your product. Equity crowdfunding offers supporters a share of the company and debt means you'll pay back the money that you receive. Angel investors are wealthy people who invest their own money into new companies. They typically invest in new businesses at the startup stage and offer their expertise to help the business grow. Venture capitalists or VC firms use investment money they've raised to invest in businesses that are already established. Angel investors and venture capitalists both invest in promising new companies with the goal of earning a strong return on their investment. The most common, though probably the least glamorous way to fund a new business using other people's money is by taking out a loan from the U.S. Small Business Administration, or SBA. SBA are loans issued by lenders, and each loan must meet the terms and conditions specified by the SBA. An SBA loan is a real financial commitment, so don't expect the kind of leniency your family or friends might offer in terms of paying back or forgiving a loan. However, borrowing and paying back an SBA loan is a great way to prove creditworthiness of your new business, which can open doors to other types of financing. To learn more about SBA loans, check out their website at www.sba.gov. If you're serious about starting a business, Rhinos, I'd advise you to give as much importance to your financial plan as you do to your business idea. To learn more about how to set up and manage a small business, check out our Start a Business course on the Rhino Invest website. Our course explains business finances in detail and walks you through the process of setting up a small business for long-term success. Until next time, this is Cashin Nunez reminding you that it is always a good time to cash in with Cashin.